Do you know what happens when your Game Jam game gets played over a thousand times? You get a lot of feedback. And since our game didn't land in the top 100, we decided to use that feedback to make our game even better. So we went through the feedback and picked out the things that we thought were actually doable within a reasonable time period. Mostly bug fixes, but there were a lot of things too that could be improved upon. No surprise, a lot of those things were the art that I made. Like this health bar border here that just didn't make any sense with the rest of the scene. And that we were using a six-sided die, but there were only three minigames. So we threw our findings up onto a Trello board and got to work. And the first thing was a bit of organization. Because during a game jam, you don't think about that kind of stuff, you just cram it into the game and hope that it works. So we figured the most important thing were the minigames. Making them a little more interesting and adding three more so the game felt more fleshed out. But rather than adding three totally different games, we built off the games that existed already. So for the wheel board, we modified the original one so it slows down instead of just instantly stopping. And then with prototype art, I made a really simple throwing knife animation for the second version of the wheel minigame where you would throw a knife at the board and it stops once the knife hits. Because I found a lot of people really depended on the wheel game for getting their easy wins. Since it stopped the moment that you clicked, it was kind of a skill test as opposed to like a little bit random. So the knife throws at a consistent speed, but the wheel spins at a different speed each time it starts. There's still some skill involved, but it's a little random as well. So hopefully that comes to a good balance where it's both skill based, but a little random. And with the wheel spinning originally, it knew whether it was right or wrong based on the angle that it stopped at. But with the knife, that wouldn't work. I mean, I'm sure it's possible to come up with a way to find whether or not the knife landed within the right angle of the object, but that was just too complicated. So I gave each animation a different collision mask. And if the center point of the knife landed in that collision mask, it was a success. I did originally have a problem with this though because it was double triggering. You'd throw the knife, it would land, and sometimes it would do it twice. Or you'd miss, hit the wrong spot, and still hurt the enemy somehow. But that was because these are all layers on top of each other, so the wheel from the spin wheel game and the wheel from the knife throw game are on top of each other. So they were both triggering at the same time. Which sounds simple to fix, and it is, but I kept forgetting that that was going to happen all the way through this project. So expect to hear that a couple more times. The next minigame was a pachinko board, which was hands down everybody's favorite minigame. So rather than messing that one up, I decided to make a second layout for a pachinko board, which again, I've done before, so done. But again with this, I was getting a lot of weird sound effects happening, and sometimes you wouldn't get any green spots to land in. And again, it was because there was two layers of the same game so all of the green boxes were ending up in the other layer. Which was easy to fix, but it took a chunk out of my time. Then there was a bug where you would walk into a room, and the enemy you fought in the fight screen wasn't the same one that was in the room. And that was because I left out a condition telling it to pick the one that was in the room. But then, the artist dumped a bunch of art on me. Which means a few things taken off the board, and a bunch more put onto it. But I put that on the back burner, and went back to adding minigames. So the last minigame that was in the jam game already was a game called Red Jack, which is basically just a poorly implemented blackjack game. So for a variation of that, we decided to make something really simple, which is just war. If you've ever played war before, basically it's just you draw a card and if it's bigger than your opponents, you win. That's it. For this one, since it was actually pure RNG, I figured I'd give people a heads up and put it in brackets just saying pure RNG. And for this I just had two variables that would match the animations of the card on screen. But yet it wasn't working. So I tried a bunch of different things and even resorted to putting text up on screen to tell me exactly what variables they were reading. And they were just totally off, right? One of them was zero and the other one was something else and it was just not what was on screen at all. So after beating my head off the wall, I realized and in this condensed format, you probably realize too. It was because there were two layers doing the same thing. And even though you couldn't see those cards behind, the game was trying to read their animations, 
which is why one of them was zero because it was face down. Anyhow, squirrel. I totally forgot to finish the pachinko board, I just made the functionality and then left it alone. So I went back and realigned that, trying to make it so that the opposite holes were hard to hit, because in the current version it was really easy to hit the three middle goals, but the corners were almost impossible to hit. So for this newer version I took out the blocks that were in the way of those corner ones and put them in the middle ones, trying to make it more varied and just more interesting. And then with all of the games done, but not yet tied back together, I figured it was a good time to put all the art in that the artist had given me. Speaking of which, at this time, our musician was off making an expanding set of music, where each time you unlock a new NPC you would get a little more music in the soundtrack, so by the end you'd have this big, deep, rich sounding song, and at the beginning it would sound kind of weak. Whereas the artist was just pumping out art, and I was hoping we would have time to put it all in. So I took their art, and started putting it in beginning with the new enemy type, which was a little rum bottle type thing. For which the big version, the higher resolution version, that one's really good. Then we replaced a lot of the terrible UI art that I had made, like the borders around the health bar, and now this border around the wheel to hide all of the ugly edges of the pixel art being rotated. And then this really good knife animation that they made, which, you know, was miles better than the little knife thing that I had. And then one problem that kept coming up in the game was people not understanding the dice roll. Because when you clicked, it would half roll and give you a 1, and then continue to roll and give you another number. And the 1 wasn't your number, it was the second number that was yours. But everybody saw the 1 and were like, oh I got a 1, again. And it was confusing a lot of people. So the artist remade that, and this version while I don't think it has the same charm as the other one, makes it a lot more clear that the number that's rolled is yours. And then I swapped out the main menu for their new one, which looks amazing. And they gave me some lighting layers to put in front of the main menu and the fight scene. So both of them would be a little more interesting to look at. And then I just had a blast going through the game, adding little wobbles and bounces and all that stuff. And at the end, I was trying to add this expanding soundtrack that the musician made, but it just didn't have the same initial impact as the original song did. So even though it would be really nice at the end, at the beginning it was kind of lackluster. So we ended up scrapping that part because we want to hit the player with as much polish as possible right at the beginning. Which is a shame because I don't like throwing out work that people did, but it all just comes down to what's better for the game. And that was it. Now it was just a matter of sending off the project to playtesters, hopefully they don't find any bugs, and to make new promo art. Even though we didn't succeed in my goal, which was to get within the top 100, I'm still really happy with this game. And I think it's good enough to finally get me that gold trophy on Newgrounds. Because I keep getting silver. As always, a huge thank you to my patrons. Because of them, my coffee cup is full. And I can even afford creamer. And also, as always, all of the cool places that I hang out are down below. And if you click on one, then I'll see you there.